starring Dean Jagger as The Wild Young Man, a new radio play based on the story of Stephen Decatur on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Out from a landlocked Australian harbor tonight darts a speedy little PT boat. Across the Atlantic rolls a mighty battle wagon of the line. Everywhere, above and below the seven seas, the might of the United States Navy is beginning to make itself felt in the fight of the peoples of the world against tyranny. And the men that sail the ships of our Navy have a tradition on which they draw. A tradition that means John Paul Jones and Commodore Perry and Admiral Farragut and Admiral Dewey. And it means as well Captain Stephen Decatur, the man that fought the Barbary pirates to a standstill and showed that free men would never be slaves. DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, again presents the distinguished character actor of stage and screen, Dean Jagger, as The Wild Young Man, a story of Stephen Decatur, written for Cavalcade by Peter Lyon. <laughs> halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. The shores of Tripoli were not mentioned in that song of America's fighting men because they happened to fill out a line of poetry. They have a very real meaning. Tonight's story begins back on a May afternoon of 1801, 141 years ago, on the southern Mediterranean shore where the Bashaw of Tripoli was absolute ruler and clapped his prisoners in a honeycomb of dank, fearsome dungeons cut deep in the rock far below the light of day. Do you remember which cell we put him in? Of course I don't. Why should I trouble to remember? This is what comes of the Basha asking to see his prisoners. Once they are snug in their dungeons, why don't he forget them? So much trouble. Bainbridge, Bainbridge. A uh, peculiar name. But then an American. I have an idea it was this cell. Try it. Hey, and uh, speak up. Speak respectfully, Moore. Hold your lantern up, Rice. Yeah. That's the American captain, all right. <laughs> How do you like that? A good guess I make, no? <laughs> Come on, dog of an American, to your feet and with speed. The bay himself has sent orders to bring you to his presence. Take your hands off me. I walk by myself. Captain Benbridge, I bid you welcome. I am honored by your attention. You blink so in the sunlight, Captain. I trust your apartments below are not so uncomfortable that you will lose your health during your long visit with us. I'm afraid my visit will not last that long. Oh, you think so. American, I have had you brought from your dungeon because I wish to watch your reactions to a little ceremony. You see yonder your flag waving from that flagpole? <laughs> A very pretty salute, Captain. I am grieved that the change should hamper your movements. A technical necessity. The ceremony may begin. What is it all about? Oh, the workmen chop that Yankee flagpole, Captain. And when it falls, we are at war with your America. Presently, your flag will be in the dust. Your greed for tribute has finally caught up with you, has it? Uh, move my throne about just a trifle so that my view may be better. You are magnificent. Ah, so. Yes, Captain. The weaker the state, the higher the tribute demanded. The flagpole, you see, is nearly chopped through. Freedom has a peculiar toughness, Basha. Lends the state a great strength. <laughs> Oh, you see? The flagpole is chopped down. The Yankee flag is in the dirt. Look well at it, American. Now, 
Tripoli is at war with the United States of America. Don't you confess to a small fear, Basha? The Yankee frigates are not far from your harbor. Oh, and in the harbor, our ports, our gunboats, including your flagship, the Philadelphia. We can sneer at your tiny American navy. I would sneer now if I were you while I still had time. And now, American, you begin to bore me. I have had enough of your presence. My game is with you over. Take him away. Back to the dungeon. And forget we tell you put him in. President Jefferson... Now, just the news brought me from abroad, sir, on the situation with the Barbary Coast pirates in the Mediterranean. Barbary pirates again? What now? Mr. President, they were successful in capturing our frigate Philadelphia, Bainbridge's ship. Our information is that Bainbridge is himself being held prisoner by the Bay of Tripoli. Well, this is outrageous. There is worth to come, sir. Our courier likewise informs me that the Tripolitans have declared war on us and can be expected to prey on every American ship that sails into the Mediterranean or along the coast of West Africa. Is there no end to their audacity? We stand alone, Mr. Jefferson. The Danish, the English, the Spanish, there for a policy of living and let live. Unfortunately, no, unfortunately we... or not, we cannot turn the other cheek. What steps have you taken? There is very little we can do, sir. On our fastest frigate... I am sending over instructions that we shall fight with all the power we have. Yes, I know, I know. It'll be three months before we'll know what effects our instructions have had. And in the meantime... In the meantime, sir, Commodore Preble is in command of our fleet in the Mediterranean. He's a good man, strong in action, committed to the attack. Well, let us hope he stands by his commitments. Let us hope that Commodore Preble stands ready to show the world that our country... And our Navy will not tolerate any interference with the orderly pursuance of our American commerce. You are challenged, sir. I am Lieutenant Stephen Decatur of the Schooner Enterprise to see Commodore Preble by appointment. Very good, sir. Decatur? Yes, sir? I sent for you. The Tripolitans have captured the frigate Philadelphia. The Philadelphia, sir? Bainbridge ran her aground on an uncharted reef. That's 36 additional cannons to fight us off. And Bainbridge, sir, was he captured? The Basha holds him in prison right now. This letter here was smuggled out with the help of the Danish consulate. Watch. Invisible ink. He wrote in lemon juice. The heat of this lamp brought out his writing. Implore you, send... In party to burn my ship. Oh, that's impossible. What's wrong with Bainbridge? As a matter of fact, sir, I, I don't think it is impossible. What do you mean? You've heard that I captured the Tripolitan catch the Mastico. Yes. But with a band of picked marine sirs, I could slip into the harbor of Tripoli, tie onto the Philadelphia. I could set her afire before the guards knew what was about. Nonsense. You've never been inside that harbor. I have the pilot to conduct me, sir. A Sicilian, Salvatore Catalano. Mastico cannot carry more than a hundred men. Can you find the volunteers to risk such a venture against twice their number? My men are itching to go, sir. Very well, Lieutenant. You have my permission to call for volunteers. <laughs> Quiet, all hands. I've called all watchers on deck to ask for volunteers for a desperate venture. We're going to scuttle a captured Philadelphia. It's manned by twice as many Tripolitans as we number. Volunteers. Marines, sailors, and boys. One step forward. All hands volunteering, sir, to the last man. Thank you. Now I'm forced to select from among you. As I call your names, please to drop after for the orders. Lieutenant Reuben James? Yes, sir. You're with Midshipman McDonough and Laws and ten men to fire the berth deck in the forward storeroom. Lieutenant Bainbridge? Yes, sir. You to avenge your brother by firing the wardroom in the steerage. Midshipman Morris? Yes, sir. To fire the cockpit in the after storeroom and... 
Lieutenant Thorne. Yes, sir. Your men are to guard the catch and cut off all possible escape from the Philadelphia. Right, sir. Now it's the plan all understood. Yes, sir. Aye, right, right, sir. Oh, where's my pilot? The moon is quartering, my lieutenant. That we should move, sir. We're off, Salvatore. You have a tongue for Spanish. Enough for these Moorish men, my lieutenant. I can stand forward with me to wait for a challenge. All hands to the stations. Take cover. Await the signal from the other pilot. Shifts to the northeast, my lieutenant. Hey, she lies off our starboard bow. She's dark, huh, Ruben? I don't like the wind, Decatur. We'll drift just beneath our guns and lie becalmed. calm. That's the chance we take. Can I hear a man singing? He who keeps watch, my lieutenant. He sings from the bow of the Philadelphia. Now the wind dies. We'll ask him to throw us a rope. Hey! <laughs> What does he say, Salvatore? He does a challenge. But tell him we lost our anchors in the storm. Ask his permission to move alongside the frigate. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, this is Quiller. Well. Ah, uh, this is Quiller. Well. Uh, he tells us we will throw a rope across the fortress, my lieutenant. We've been seated at the men are standing by the board. Come here, come! We discovered the force in our hand. All hands on the sheets and heave to the frigate. Stand by to boy the pirates. Hold your fire. We're roused to shore. You steal that powder. Come on, lads. Up and at them. Lieutenant Thorne. Yes, sir. Bainbridge? Yes, sir. Where's Morris? Then he comes, sir, with all these men. Well, then we're all accounted for. Come on, by the light of this fire, there's short batteries. There's short batteries will riddle us. We'll have to row. Detail your men to oars. Stop with oars. Stand by to guide us. <laughs> Lieutenant Decatur reporting, Commodore. The Philadelphia? It's destroyed, sir, completely. How many losses from your company? One man slightly wounded, sir. One man? Believe me, I shall see that you get your captaincy for this night, Decatur. They put a cannonball to the mainsail of the catch, sir. Otherwise, we're in order. You've earned the rest, Mr. Decatur. My compliments to your men. You may inform them they'll be given double rations of grog. If you'll permit me, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, what is it? Well, I don't think we have time yet for that rest, Commodore. What do you mean? Well, they'll never believe in Tripoli. We gutted the Philadelphia with only one catch. Now, I believe they know our ships are standing off just outside the harbor. They'll be sailing out to meet us. They'll surely outnumber us. Yet I'd rather give fight than turn tail. Now, I have a simple little stratagem, sir, if I may. I think you've earned the right to speak out, Mr. Decatur. Well, it would cost us only one frigate, but it would mean the whole pirate fleet. Talk sense to me, sir. Because you affect one miracle at once, you must start thinking in terms of others. Well, it's no miracle, sir. Strip a frigate of her armament. Load every grain of gunpowder we have aboard her. Take a skeleton crew to manor, sail her right into their fleet where it rides at anchor in the harbor, and blow up the whole collection at one fell swoop. Yeah. Yes. It might be done. I'm sure of it, sir. Make, make of the frigate one enormous bomb. But how to get the skeleton crew back out again? Well, we'd try to slip out of the harbor in a lifeboat, sir. During the confusion, of course, that is a slim chance. But, but the men I've picked, they know that. They're anxious to try it anyway. And you want my permission for the venture? I do, sir. It's yours, Mr. Decatur. And good luck. You are listening to Dean Jagger in the role of Stephen Decatur on The Cavalcade of America, brought to you by DuPont maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Under a broiling Mediterranean sun, a lean black American frigate, manned by a handful of picked veterans, her hold one vast powder barrel pushes steadily toward the pirate port of an enemy country. Can you make him out, sir? Yes, he's flying a pirate flag, all right. Probably one of the thieves who calls himself port inspector. Salvatore. Yes, Lieutenant. Point up in the wind a little closer. Stand by to haul your sheets in. Aye, sir. A ship ahoy! A ship you answer, Salvatore. Yes, sir. 
Royal Arms, British Merchantmen, cargo of cotton. All in your sails. We're sending an inspector aboard. What shall I tell him, Lieutenant? Tell him nothing. Let the inspector come aboard. The inspector. What if he should look below, Mr. James? Yes. Go below and watch the men with the powder. Yes. Salvatore. Hi, sir. Order your sail close hauled. <laughs> Thousand pardons for this intrusion, gentlemen. We were assailed with the notion that this was an American ship. A foolish error, was it not? Well, now that you recognize your mistake, perhaps you'll be good enough to get... Cotton, you said? A cargo of cotton? Cotton, yes, from Liverpool. Do you wish to see our papers? This is a humiliation, I need hardly remind you, which will not Please, be lightly... Captain, rest assured, I do not plan to inspect the cargo. I will simply see you safely into harbor. A formality. Uh, these men... They are all your crew. It seems a small number for the long voyage from Liverpool. Yes, this is just one watch. The others are below. Ah, just so, just so. I trust you will pardon my inquisitiveness, Captain. The Americans, you understand. Well, what about the Americans? You're to war with them? Myself, I went to Cambridge, although I'm still Mohammedan. That was in the days when Americans were throwing tea into the harbor of Boston. As an Englishman, Captain, you will sympathize with my attitude towards Americans. They're quite mad, you understand, quite mad. So crazy they won't even pay tribute to pirates, huh? Salvatore, further up into the wind. Aye, my Captain. Now, pirates, that's a harsh word, Captain. The Sultan wishes only to protect the shipping in these dangerous waters, yes? Naturally, he must maintain a navy to do it, yes? And the navy, it is not a cheap toy. Americans must pay their share to maintain it as the others do, or... Uh, or what? Or we take their ships away from them. You see, kind of tribute. You impress the American seamen into slavery, that it? Really, Captain, you have a talent for selecting the ugliest words. Slavery? We simply allow them to work out their own ransom. It's a favor to them. Sounds like a profitable enterprise, Inspector, so long as it works. We flatter ourselves it will all work out quite well, Captain. The Americans being mad are inclined to be stubborn, but they will learn. They will become accustomed to our order. We are in the harbor lane, sir. Oh, well, I'm sorry that our pleasant little trip is so near an end. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me, Inspector, that is the Sultan's fleet anchored over there, isn't it? Yes, that's the biggest part of it, yes. We like to keep the lower harbor clear for merchantmen like yourself. Ships that pay us that to you. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Salvatore. Right, sir. Three points to leeward. Three points to leeward it is, sir. Uh, Captain, I think you are confused. The merchantmen don't dock over there. I just told Iron you. I'm in command on the ship, Inspector. But you're sailing right into the midst of the fleet. Your powers of observation improve, Inspector. Mr. James. Yes, sir. All hands to man the two lifeboats. Everything ready. Yes, sir. Right away, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, Lieutenant what sort of joke is this? Who are you? Lieutenant Stephen Decatur of the United States Navy, Inspector, who proposes to blow your fleet out of the water. Watch the wheel, Salvatore. Yes, my Lieutenant. Very well, set the fuse. An order is to abandon ship. But, Captain, what about me? A seat in this lifeboat will cost you $50,000, Inspector. But, Captain, what ghastly joke is this? Lean to the oars. No, wait. Wait, I say. All right, hold I on, say. lad. All right, hold on. Come along, then, Inspector. Climb aboard. I have just a few gold pieces in my purse, but I swear the rest will be paid later. No, I'm not so much interested in your money, Inspector, as in giving you a taste of what it's like to pay tribute for your life. Now, all hands, lean to those oars and row for all you're worth. Yep. Oh. Oh. He was not last more than a minute, sir. Any second now. Steady, steady, steady on everybody. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. The fleet. All our fleet in ruin. It is my fault. Tell the inspector, if my cargo really had been cotton, would you ask for a bribe when we got ashore? A fee for my services, perhaps, Captain, but not a bribe. A fee for your services, I see. Well, now I'm going to ask you a fee for my services, since the situation's been reversed. Anything within reason, Captain, if you'll get me safely ashore. Well, I wish to be taken directly to the Sultan. The Sultan himself? But I perhaps could the never... Port Authority should care to know about the fees you charge for not inspecting cargoes, especially my cargo of cotton. 
hope you can depend on me, Captain. I will arrange that you have an interview with the butler. Majesty the Basha, defender of Mohammed, prince of princes, protector of all who bow thrice toward Mecca. Gentlemen, pray be seated. Bring chairs for the infidels. We prefer to stand. You are the Americans, no? I say it was not nice of you to blow up my ships. I have scarcely any left. We shall have to take more of yours, I am afraid, to make up with the loss. Your Highness, we were informed that your navy was so expensive to keep up, you therefore were forced to levy tribute from merchant ships. We thought to relieve you of your burden. You are mad, young man. You are likewise insulting. Oh, and yes, another thing. There's the trifling matter of $200,000 worth of indemnities and the immediate release of the Americans you hold prisoner. Be very careful what you say to me and how you say it. You seem to forget you are completely in my power at this moment. Do you realize I could have you clapped into one of my dungeons for the rest of your natural life? I rather think not, Your Highness. We have quite a few ships standing just outside the entrance to your harbor. What? Ships with guns, Your Highness. And unless we return to those ships within three hours, the American fleet will come into the harbor firing and it will not stop firing until there's no more triple A. Ah, treatment. It should be done in any case to pay for the piracy, the kidnapping, the slavery into which you forced American prisoners. Why do they send wild young men to treat for peace with old power? Two hundred thousand dollars, your highness. Two hundred thousand dollars for indemnities. I have noticed before this, this peculiar moral attitude that Americans take in relation to tribute or to prison. Freedom is not to be bought and paid for with money, highness. Money is for restitution. There are many things for which Americans will pay dearly, but not one cent will we pay for tribute. Right there lies the difference between freedom and slavery. I... I will take you into my confidence, Captain. Just, Lieutenant. You heighten my embarrassment. I realize I am beaten. But my subjects... Frankly, they will think it rather odd if I let you go without some little token exchange of gifts. Uh, just as a token, Lieutenant. A promise, shall we say. Something concrete. I can show them. I repeat, Your Highness, not one cent for tribute and $200,000 from you as an indemnity. Ah, well. Have the Grand Vizier sent in to me. $200,000. Ah. And then I will ask you to sign a treaty, Highness. The United States of America demands assurance that, they, that you will pay permanent respect to her integrity and her free commerce and her national honor. She'll tolerate no further insult to her flag. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, pray your attention. President of the United States. All right, gentlemen, we have drunk to our homecome hero. I should like to propose another toast. Our Navy, with such an auspicious dawn, what may we not hope will be its meridian splendor? And now, a toast from Captain Decatur himself. Gentlemen, I'm deeply honored by your, dare I say, your tribute. <laughs> Mr. President, may I assure you that I'm sensible of the great honor you do me at this banquet. We've toasted the Navy, you've been good enough to toast me. I submit this one thing that's not been given her due. Our country, gentlemen. In her intercourse with foreign nations, may she always be in the right. But our country, right or wrong. And now, the star of tonight's cavalcade, Dean Jacker.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to point out how you, the civilian, can help increase the tin stockpile. Save all the tin cans that you can lay your hands on. Preparing it for reclamation is simple. Just remove the top from the bottom of the can and step on the hollow cylinder and flatten it out and put it away in a dry place. Otherwise, it'll rust. Rusty tin can't be reclaimed. And hang on to that tin until the government asks you for it through your local salvage committees. The call might come in a month or it might be a little longer, but please keep that tin. The need is urgent. Thank you. Next week on Cavalcade, a new radio play about a man whose inventive genius helped save America when another European dictator threatened our liberty. That man was Eli Whitney. Our star will be Carl Swenson of the Cavalcade Players. Don't forget next week, Carl Swenson as Eli Whitney in Man of Design. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Don Vuri. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from DuPont. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.